The World Trade Organization is the only international organization dealing with the global rules of trade between nations. Its main function is to ensure that trade flows as smoothly, predictably, and freely as possible. The result is a more prosperous, peaceful, and accountable economic world. This is the beginning, and everything's at stake. There's only one thing that the ruling uh, interests have ever wanted, and that's everything. What we are against is trade at any cost. This is not about trade, this is about a corporate constitution. We're pitted to be pitted against each other in a race to the bottom. Who will accept the most miserable working conditions? Tonight, the World Trade Organization meetings are being declared a failure. We shut down the WTO. We've made their meetings cancel, we've expressed to the world that we're not going to put up with this undemocratic system and this kind of institutions that push us down. Organized labor does not tolerate lower standards for any worker, anywhere, for any reason. We will fight for those workers. We will not stop. Uh, I think what was accomplished was uh, the uh, building of a network of, of people that it's going to be very difficult to break. We've demonstrated that this is an issue of great importance to ordinary Americans of every stripe, from every political spectrum. And um, in addition, I think that we have discovered ourselves. We have discovered that we are part of a larger group, a larger family of people who believe still in democracy. No more violence! No more violence! What happened today was there was a total collapse in the decision-making structure of the global corporate rule hierarchy, and you had such a revolt going on outside the ministerial, with people on the street and protesters and so on, and you had a, a serious revolt inside the ministerial, Delegates will be leaving Seattle tomorrow, Dan, and they'll have nothing to show for their effort. With uh, third world governments saying that they're not going to go for any more crappy deals and being excluded by the rich countries. I mean, the protest has provided all the, the, the chaos and the noise outside, and they were definitely heard. And I, I like to think that that sort of inspired um, many countries who are also excluded from the process to, to speak up for themselves and be bold. Um, and that helped grind things to a stop. The issues the delegates were talking about here and the issues the people outside were protesting about, uh, they concurred. The only difference is that the people out there were not able to come in here. And I agree with the president of this country who said that we also need to listen to those people and listen to the issues that they're bringing forward. The issues that delegates had brought forward, particularly the ones from Africa, were not taken into consideration. The meeting was conducted in a very uh, non-participatory manner, in a very undemocratic manner, very non-transparent, and therefore we felt that uh, in many situations that we were left out in the discussions, and therefore we had nothing to discuss, therefore we had nothing to agree on. And a lot of delegates did agree with us as well. Therefore, for this reason, we feel that, uh, unfortunately, this meeting could not continue in that manner. Ambassador Barshevsky from the U.S. and Mike Moore just gave a, a very um, brief and long-faced explanation for uh, how there are deep crises within the institution. Uh, they said that the WTO is taking a time out. That uh, something's going to continue on in, in Geneva, but there are no parameters or no timetables or, or really anything. So for us, it's total victory. The bottom line of why the negotiations fell apart was a combination of two factors. For the first time in the GATT or WTO negotiations, countries came here having told their public they wouldn't undermine their public interest, and this time they were sufficiently exposed that when the closed room deal started, in fact, they were held to what their public wanted. The politics of the WTO and the politics of trade in the United States and across the globe will never quite be the same. The world 
around jobs and productivity and trade without representation from the people, the real people, not just the bureaucrats, controlled by the puppet strings of the dollar bill, but the real people, the real people, the workers, the workers of this world, the people who build the buildings, the people, the real people, the people on the assembly lines, you must include the people. Well, definitely today we have shown that people can be united against the mighty force. Well, what you saw today in Seattle was the most significant victory for fair trade and against corporate-dominated trade uh, in the last 40 years of trade battles in the United States. Everybody went, goes back to their four corners of the world now to take democracy back and uh, spread it. And that's the real key. Take the whole world about, tell the world about the WTO. Uh, tell them that it's uh, a people's uprising that's going to stop it, and that's all we have to do. Now we continue to, to hound the WTO. We have this enormous political space that we've opened now where the WTO is at a standstill, and we are, are there to sort of rush in and, and, and take the floor and really push for the alternatives that we have. I mean, that's what the discussion needs to be about. What are the rules going to be, and who's going to write them? And that's, that's what we've won today. We need to keep the pressure on so that labor environment and labor environment and all the other concerns come together to focus on getting our voice into the WTO so that these deals aren't made behind closed doors. I think the United States is a kind of die-hard free trader, but uh, normal citizens or environment groups, etc., are strongly against that direction. I was so much impressed with these people. I think the big message we take is to go back to our own original places and organize ourselves against the mighty power. We keep going. This is just the beginning. Definitely this is not protests. These are not just protests in the street. This is a mobilization of the communities and people that are all around us. So we're going to continue. speaking out for the people. I was really pissed off this whole Generation X or apathetic portrayal of like like young people when in fact we are like our people I've seen are incredibly like passionate and um, the problem usually has been the lack of options we have for expressing ourselves. People have realized like how much youth are organizing and how educated youth are and how dedicated youth are and how important they are. There were a lot of minors, a lot of minors. We had to do um, separate solidarity, jail solidarity trainings. I've been out on the streets every single day this whole week and every time I go home I watch TV and it's just totally fucked up. Like the media's been covering it so wrong and it's been always geared towards violence and riots when there has been no violence or riots towards particularly the youth activism. A lot of the time the media does play up like they're just young and idealistic, you know, They'll sell out like all their parents did in the 60s. That's not what the whole message here is about. It's about um, getting our point across, having our voices heard. It's not about all that. People were turning against the youth as if we were all the anarchists and all. It was like turning against us when we should be in solidarity. So I said, the only violence that's been done has been by the police and youth don't hurt people like WTO. I'm not really that surprised in a sense because I knew we always had it in us. I'm just glad that we had the occasion for it to come together like this. We're standing up and we're fighting and we're going to keep going. We got to do this. We got to go out here. Right, right. And our membership has always stood when it stood up and was counted when it came time to talk about uh, issues around the world. We in the International Longshore and Warehouse Union want to give them the welcome they deserve and let them know what we think of their plans. So we've closed the port of Seattle and other ports on the West Coast. It showed the solidarity of all organized labor when 
we shut down the, the waterfront and stood shoulder to shoulder with our the rest of our union members. Well, this is kind of a, uh, what, what should I say, a tool of last resort, and we have used it very right sparingly, but, uh, you know, there have been times when we have refused to load cargo uh, that was going to South Africa or unload cargo that was coming from South Africa, where we have been, uh, we have deeply felt um, a connection well, with the people and their struggle. Our members finally realized that, you know, just because the cargo is coming in, we have to look at how it's being produced. And we're, we were discovering child labor that they were using. Uh, uh, the type of slavery type of uh, labor force they were using and, and our members said, you know, morally, we've got to stand up. When the Spirit says stand, we're going to stand, 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 we're going to stand. When the Spirit says stand, we're going to fight. We're gonna you know, we've been talking about this for the last year. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, like most of the people in Seattle didn't know what the WTO was. We're no longer in the dark on how how the environment is being abused in Southeast Asia, how the people are being abused in El Salvador. I guess it's a real honor to be working in a union that is as democratic as the ILWU and that has such a rich history uh, of standing behind human rights. This is what I do every morning. Come down here and stand around, drink coffee. Mostly I drive heavy equipment. There used to be thousands of longshoremen down here. Now we're a number, probably around 500, moving faster and moving more cargo. They're calling me right now to be dispatched. Uh, so I guess I escaped. In this industry, being a union is the only thing. None of the benefits, none of the safety conditions, none of the working conditions we would have would ever be there without the solidarity and the unanimity of the longshoremen on the west coast of the United States. I think that one of the most exciting things about being in the march was the opportunity to link up with people from all over the world. And I think when you're dealing with a global entity such as the WTO, you kind of have to have a global voice. Some of the very issues that we hope to bring forward and to uh, put on the table of the WTO now are being discussed that without our presence in the streets of Seattle and without our massive solidarity by labor, not only in this area but across the country, wouldn't have been accomplished. We're going to keep that voice loud and clear that you start treating our, your people with dignity, you start paying them a decent wage, you know, you allow them to organize themselves, you know, or you're not going to get your cargo moved as fast as you think you can. And uh, we'll continue to be the forefront in the struggle for human dignity. Now that Seattle is uh, winding down with the demonstrations and our efforts, we should keep the feet to the fire of the WTO. So the nice thing about an American, uh, about an American police state, is that they, while they do block off the street in this zone, you can still get to the local shopping mall. subject to uh, to film. So can you tell me, are you going to have a chance to do some holiday shopping this year? Oh yeah, I do a lot of holiday shopping. Yes, babe. <laughs> My holiday shopping plans. Well, now that everything's boarded up downtown and uh, there's police surrounding most of the malls. Can you get to do some holiday shopping this year? No, okay. <laughs> Thank you.
National Guardsmen have been working overtime this week to protect the city, and they're getting a lot of thanks for their efforts. In fact, some people are bringing hot coffee and treats to the troops as they stand in the streets. <laughs> It's been amazing. Um, we've had cookies, bagels, uh, coffee. They just go into stores and buy stuff for us. It's been, it's been great. Well, the main motivation for us uh, starting the Independent Media Center was folks on the ground here in Seattle recognizing the importance of this issue and also all, that all these tremendous, brilliant, articulate people were coming from all over the world to speak truth to power here, to confront globalization and its anti-democratic agenda. One of the critical aspects to uh, this center is that it's been a clearinghouse of information for lots of individuals, not only who live in Seattle, but have been coming in from around the country and around the globe um, to participate in the events this week. And uh, we are providing a base of operation for journalists and others who are going out into the streets and capturing the content editing the content and then distributing it over the internet, over satellite, over faxes, uh, literally around the world. We have to find our own ways to get the message out. So because the revolution will not be televised by the corporate media, we hope that the information that has been presented to you by the alternative media is one that you will learn. What's, what's really important to note about the whole center that's taking place is that um, it's, it's, it's fairly unprecedented. We've got teams that are covering video, we've got teams that are covering, covering print, we have a newspaper actually being published every day out of this center. The, the blind spot, which is this paper, it's the paper that the Independent Media Center puts out every day um, during the WTO and it's basically like a 11 by 17 fold over that's front and back and which is pretty much all we can afford to do. I'm sure we could fill a lot more of it at this point point. and this was today's headline. So you weren't, you weren't read any of your rights when you were arrested? And how long have you been held? My friend Bjorn, who works here at the IMC, said, Pete, you should come over and get an audio recorder and record what you were doing. You know, and so I came over here and I got one and I've been out in the streets and I, I've interviewed everybody from um, National Guard to a retired police officer 15 years or 30 years with the Seattle Police Force as well as local citizens as, as well as of course protesters. I've been editing a lot of audio and I think it's really important that's why I've been, at, been here I think it's more important for me than going out in the streets because protest really works when everyone knows about it that's the whole point is to go and get your word across and your message out and for me being here I can get a whole lot more people's message out than just one body in, in, a, in thousands. What we're doing here is we're watching footage of uh, video that's been shot uh, that we're picking out segments, short 30 second to one minute segments uh, to go uh, to be encoded to be put on the web. We take the tapes as they come in from the streets and we dub them immediately to VHS so that they can send them to the other place uh, where the satellite feeds editing is going on and uh, those VHS tapes are brought down and we digitize those immediately and we're just looking for little snippets, uh, interesting things, things that can inform people. Actually my life has been held throughout the week in trying to make sure that the site is up because we had not expected so many hits coming in from all over the world. Um, so uh, mainly my job has been to, to make sure that the site is up. Welcome to the video desk at the Independent Media Center. Uh, what we're doing here is taking tapes in from the field. Um, over a hundred videographers from around the country have come to Seattle to make sure that we break past the corporate media blockade and get images out. Uh, not only images of the uh, police brutality that's been happening, but of course the messages as well. It's six o'clock in the morning. What are you up to? We are going to the docks oh, to okay. talk to the rank and file, the longshoremen, and the vice president of the longshoremen's union to talk to them about the impact of imports 
and possible decisions by the WTO on their jobs and their lives in the community. The people, the whole world is going to listen to the voice of the people. We cannot ignore them. The snow is the voice of the people. The snow is the voice of the people. And we are not afraid of the So this is where the dubbing and logging of all the tapes that come into the center happen. They come up from 3rd Avenue and we have people working here to dub them off and keep a log of what's on them and then we have sort of an organized system for getting them to the editors. Given that we started planning this a month ago, we did five days of satellite casting, one hour a day, half hour program production every day, all volunteer crews with uh, little or no money to get off the ground. I think it's amazing. And I think the series is probably going to be one of the best documents of what happened here this week. The individuals here are, are concerned about getting the truth out. And uh, you know, it, it's focus which makes things happen and desire and perseverance. We've also started talking about y using this model and trying to go elsewhere in the country and the world and help people kind of set, it, set up similar center so that there really could be an alternative media network around the world. We have decided to stop to cry to them and start mobilize grassroots. The power is in the people. We have the power. Let's use it. Let's sound the drum. Let's get the alarm out and get the information out. And we are not afraid. <laughs> WTO protests were not about a few isolated issues. They were about a corporate attempt to take away our power. The brutality of the police was not the crime of a few individual cops. It was the reaction of a system threatened by the sound of our voices. In the streets, we did not ask for concessions. In these days, we were free. This is what democracy looks like. I'm going to take this home, and this is going to keep me going for a long time, because it's really opened my eyes to some amazing possibilities. We've seen something that we need to be able to carry with us and keep going, because something like this is going to happen again before too long, you know. This is the turning point. We have the beginnings of a new movement, I think. There was a banner, um, you know, Teamsters and, turtle and Turtles together at last. That was so wonderful. Um, of course, we belong together. The same people who exploit natural resources exploit human resources. We belong together. It's time to uh, stop feeling as though we are, are isolated entities living uh, lives of unsatisfactory consumption and, and, and oppression. It's, it's that we can do it. It's that we have it in us. Isn't this extraordinary? I've been around since the 60s and my dad in the 30s with the UAW and this is really happening for the first time. It's great. The WTO went against too many people, too many people at once. Women's rights, animal rights, every different type of group of people as affected by this in some way, shape, or form. And that's their worst mistake ever. If they had kept their power a little bit more hidden, then they, they would probably be okay. But you know what? They made the biggest mistake ever because they pissed off too many people. And now we're going to fight back. And we're going to fight back unified. And that's what's going to help us.
to critique the World Trade Organization, you have to critique capitalism, which is great. It's about time we were able to do that. So this is wonderful. This is all labor. The ordinary people that work for a living, the unions are opposing it on an enormous scale. The entire West Coast was locked down. Nothing was loaded or unloaded on the docks from Alaska all the way to San Diego on Tuesday. The entire West Coast. I mean, this is major. This is major. side of the screen, the people watching this at home should recognize that the world has woken up and that there's a huge demand for fair trade and there's a lot more imagination going on in the streets and in social movements about what our global economy can look like than there is going on in those meetings. I am reading this off my pager. This is direct information. This is direct information. A complete collapse. A complete collapse. There will be no new millennium round. You're in good company. Have you been to jail for justice? I want to shake your. 